first of all, I, I would like to know how you, you know, collaborated or how you, you know, how you well, started your we collaboration. Were friends. Anyway. We were friends before. You yeah, were friends. You were friends, and what what made you choose to work together or to to realize projects? I mean, oftentimes as friends, it's kind of you know can be a little bit challenging to. Uh, I was uh, the producer at her first film, mm -hmm. or My actually film. Uh, at her second film, okay. and so this is how we met actually, and uh, connected and uh, decided to to collaborate. To collaborate, yeah. The second time. And we understood we have the same kind of vision about about. Uh, both films, about the way they should look. It's very important for both of us, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and we really wanted to, to make something beautiful. And, uh, and I think also in, in this kind of time, like people usually wear a lot of masks. I don't know. Like people are more cynic, cynical. And uh, I think we decided to do a film about that, about removing those masks and to be more more here, more alive. Mm -hmm. To show what, what, it in a pure what, what way. What do you think about the, those masks? Like, what what kind of behavior do they? Does that mean? Or like, what you know? What do they represent for you? Noel and the character of Noel in the movie dresses like the grandfather, mm -hmm. actually, like with pieces of from his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he symbolizes uh, more of the past, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the character of Dina in the movie uh, is a wolf, actually, uh, because she is uh, wild and uh, represents more of the future and... Uh, like a lonely wolf, actually. Uh, yeah, but of, of this lonely comparing to Noel, she represents the future, or uh, could say. And it's also Purim. Uh, Purim is the, like Purim the Halloween, like, but for yeah. the Jews. So we use it as a metaphor to use those masks that we wear every day, just in this day, and how how we can remove them, and everything could be so much more beautiful, actually. So why why do why should we remove them if we have them anyway? So we could keep them and just let it be like this. What why why do you think it's so important to take that masquerade away and show this? What's so beautiful? The stories reveal ourselves. And Maybe our true feelings about things. Uh, maybe it sounds, sometimes it looks like it's more easy to deal with problems when we are covered, but then you can find out that actually when you take it off, uh, it's sometimes more clean and more pure. Um, and th this is what they actually like uh, going through in th in the film, yeah. like. Uh, they understand of uh, that when you uh, actually get rid of all the costumes, suddenly you have such, some relief inside of you. Dina, Dina has, we have a scene about this in the film, that Dina is going back home and she realizes her grandfather is dead. And then she understands she cannot talk with anyone because no one really listens, no one really talks, no one really exists for her. Everybody mess is, is messing with his own costume, and she cannot speak with her friends. So, in that point, she realized that Noel is sitting in the kitchen and is the only one in the film that is not is not with a costume in that part. And then this is where she can actually talk with someone and actually experience this really bad experience. Like in the beginning, Dina is trying to make Noel like her trying to put cover on him uh, and uh, try to put on him a costume. Mm -hmm. But uh, like after that, they, they get the understanding that without this, it's more close. They can actually communicate if they don't have the, the covers on them. They can actually see each other, they can actually exist. And is it, in a way, also um, criticizing youth, or is it more about educating or encouraging? I don't think it's about youth only. I think it's about the society. Mm -hmm. And I think today, I don't know why, but people are more scenic and, more, and wear more costumes and, than before. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's, it's criticizing about mm -hmm. anyone. We just wish people would be more free with themselves and 
more pure and say what they think and uh, and fear. Like no one really wants to feel today. Everybody wants to be like I'm cool and I'm far and mm-hmm. like, and I'm, you know, like but don't you think that youth plays an important role in this question? Because because uh, they or we are in a way the ones who will you know be in charge of a lot of positions and decisions in 10, 20 years. Yeah. And so it's always a delicate thing, you know, like yeah. when you're young and the way you were raised and the way you see the world and you want to you envision it. So I'm wondering if what special role maybe youth or young people play in this entire problem of masquerade it's and the real self and the because it's a it's a struggle you know from puberty on until even in your 20s it go it never ends in a way yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a very crucial time i think between yeah puberty and i don't know mid and 20s but you know this building up of a personality and the connection to yourself and something and i mean in your film you cover sort of all the like this generational thing yeah. i guess it, it covers goes from the young to the old and death and you know it, it's all involved but i was just wondering if if there's like a certain perspective on youth or young people you want to talk about or also in relation that your film is being played in the generation yeah. section yeah. and it has a younger yeah, audience actually we are youth so yeah. <laughs> not quite not quite but uh, i'm calling myself <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i feel young yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, i think that uh, the connection to 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 the youth if you want to call it like that uh, we live in tel aviv uh, it's a big city and um, it's also uh, about us the 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 generation uh, that lives uh, in these days in tel aviv that uh, likes to wear a lot of masks and likes to wear a lot of costumes. Mm. I think that every, everyone basically have like um, 10 different uh, kind of, uh, of personalities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we use, uh, we choose when to use what. Uh, but yeah, I can say that it's also criticized. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think we all maybe criticize is a strong not, word. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe but just like all, encouraging or raising awareness or something for. But also, I was wondering because I, I didn't grow up. You know, I never grew up in a in an area or a place in the world where, where where there was a constant threat of violence or war or something. So, I have a very maybe different. I was just wondering how it is for Israeli youth. I mean, it's very normal, right? But it, there is always this. I feel like constant threats of yeah. you know violence and i heard from many talks i had with people that maybe because of that there is a deeper like um, desire for life and just living I and experiencing because there you know that you live in a zone of this planet which is very you know it's heated up you know there's it's it's, it's something is going on it might explode every other minute i think it works for both sides i mm-hmm. think there are people You also want to live more because you know it will finish more, but also you lose a lot of your friends and, lot, and your family, and, and you know you can lose someone. So you need to put this, just fix something, a wall, a wall like so you, you will not be hurt. Yeah. So I think yeah. it works for, for both sides. In, yeah, I agree. But because I'm an Israeli and live in this reality, so probably I cannot see this like Maybe. the way you do. Yeah. Um, I mean, also, I have never been there, so I can't really yeah. see it. I, also, I always a, feel very difficult for me to judge it because I've never been there, I've never lived there. Yeah. The media is always creating very, it's very polarized, you know, the yeah. image. So I don't know what to say. But Actually, when you, when you come as a tourist, you don't feel anything. I mean, Tel Aviv is a, it's a party yeah. and nightlife and uh, very full of life. and. Uh, I think the difference between the youth in Israel and the youth uh, like in other places yeah. is maybe uh, the idea that we know is what to lose. I mean, what losing a person is mm. in a very young age. Uh, this is the reason why Dina in the movie, uh, in the film, mm. she's very young, but you can see that she reacts to death. Uh, like maybe I can say that it's unusual a bit, like yeah. to go to a party. She just and trying to right away to find the solution. Exactly. Because she knows and she needs to continue. She immediately knows what to do with Noel, like take him to a party, go outside, uh, see the world again, yeah. uh, take back the life that, uh, that she just saw that ended. Um, and I think that this is 
maybe it's sad that we know to do uh, to do the best. Uh, maybe uh, we know how to do it. Like, do you think to, it's to survive and to continue? I, I had just a very interesting interview today too with a, he's a Greek filmmaker, but he lives in Germany and he made a fiction film. It's a fiction documentary. It's called Esho Lot, and it's about a friend that commits suicide, and then all his friends gather in a country house somewhere outside. And all they do is having sex and party just to forget, you know, the death, the fact of death. Okay. So, like, this escape into party life and something, do you think it has something to do with it? That you don't want to deal with death, maybe, and just, uh, it's you know, drugs and It's maybe that we are tired from it. Not like tired, we yeah. don't want to deal. I mean, like, Dina, in the, fi in the film, she's symbolized, I think, that the idea of, uh, with life, we can... Uh, take over the death yeah. uh, thing, but only with life. But it's not. Uh, I mean, it's not sex and uh, violence and uh, I don't know. Like it's oh, very pure uh, what they're going through together. Yes, the journey. The, 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 the journey is is pretty pure. I mean, they look inside of the eyes of each other. They discover each other. I think in the other uh, reality, Dina and the Filipino guy would never find a way to connect uh, unless uh, the grandfather uh so how is what is the position of the Filipino community okay and this I is know, a actually I mean, I interesting this, you know, question you know, this, you know Tomer Heyman I guess right so it's Tomer, uh, Tomer yeah, Heyman, Heyman. Yeah. Yeah. he made this Roger. documentary on yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I shot no what's it called again it's called um, they about the, the grandmother about not the mo the mother also, but it's it's basically about the the, the transvestite community, yeah. Filipino gay community, and in this documentary you see very much the ah, very okay. ostracized okay. part they play in the society, the caretaker. Yeah. You know, they they only yeah. you know make a work in a certain sector of the working world in Israel. Yeah, the this caretaking thing, right? If Filipinos coming to Israel uh, mostly these days with visa uh, to stay mm -hmm. through companies um, and uh, in order to take care of uh, old people, yes. people with disabilities, uh, just because I think that there's something special. <laughs> I mean, mm. they have it. Uh, they have. They have this pureness. That's why we chose uh, this character because, and they know how to deal with. Uh, they have so a lot of compassion, yeah. uh, which you, it's dif more difficult to find that Israeli uh, Israeli people. To, you can, I don't know if to say that they don't like to. Um, I don't know. It's a difficult question. It's difficult. I don't yeah, know. Filipino guy, uh, guys and uh, Filipinos, uh, they have some compassion that you cannot find. Uh, I, I didn't tell anyone else that does the hard work of taking care of all people yeah. like them. Why? And I think I we don't are, know. <laughs> we also chose the Filipino because it's an outsider, because everybody is, is costume and everybody has this kind of world that we, we want to, to take some something pure from outside to to take Dina away from them, from, from this world. And before we have a scene with Dina with their friends and their old costume and nobody really listens one to each other mm. and then she go home and, and in the apartment dinner never eye contact now and he always just looking for her and he sees her but for her he is transparent but she cannot see Invisible. her yeah. Yeah. and then we, we wanted to take this, this character from outside to, to pull her out of her situation okay. to his world maybe do not take them as for granted like a um, they are necessary uh, and uh, they have a lot of problem of staying in Israel, visas, uh, stuff like that uh, with immigration. Uh, so, so we try to show a different side maybe of the Filipino guy. That, um but maybe I think it's still interesting to think about what the Filipino community or these caretakers have that like mainstream Israeli society doesn't. Like, what could that be? Why, um, Why do they have it? What? That the mainstream Israeli, because you just mentioned that they have this, you know, sort of compassion and they have a certain 
you know, skills or tr character traits that could not be expressed, or not so easily expressed by mainstream Israeli society. Yes, but I think it's also a very hard work. It's very hard work. They are delicate people and they are very polite uh, and uh, they need the money. Uh, so I guess that it's a combination of a lot of things. They are coming from very poor areas, uh, needing the money, willing to do for the money, uh, a lot of hard work um, and just doing it better. I mean, with air own like uh, compassion to the oldest uh, people and uh, they're very polite and uh, nice people actually close community but uh, they don't have like Israeli have a lot of fruit sometimes uh, they know what they want they want it right now uh, I don't think that uh, it's a work for them maybe I'm trying to think how to like say it. Um, what do you think? I think it's a hard work, and people from outside come that need money come and do it. And yeah, it's a work that no one wants to do, actually. Like to clean after old people and. Um, and these people, no one really sees them, and it's. And I think in in the minute they are our, our ages, and. They can be so beautiful when we can meet together. I think it's, it's very... A lot of communities in Israel are unseen. And I think when, when we can open... <laughs> when we can open our eyes, then everything can be much more beautiful. And I don't speak only about the Philippines, but... But do you think it's a very particular Israeli film? It's in Israeli, what? Is, there, isn't it, is it like a very particularly Israeli film or does it speak to a wide audience too? I think it speaks to a to wide audience. I don't think it's really... This film has no language. In, in every culture you have uh, closer communities and you have smaller communities and you have uh, like different religion, religious or whatever. Like yeah, you can find it uh, you can worldwide. Find it yeah. And we decided to make it without words. So no one will, will actually think it's, it's just there. Because I think in every place there are those transparent people that in, in the second that we open our eyes will earn so much. So. How was the reaction of the audience? Did you talk to the, I guess it's mostly young people who watch it or younger, younger audience. Did they ask questions or did they... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was only the first time, so... Well, first uh, it time. was just yeah. the first time. They did ask us about the costume and uh, like the design and uh, <laughs> yeah. give us compliment on our, uh, <laughs> our clothes and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know, I think that uh, maybe today there will be more questions. We're waiting for questions. It was just In the meantime, it was just you dressed very nicely, uh, good design so and... Uh, <laughs> and did you... It has probably been screened in Israel too, or is this the very first time? It was the, the first, time. first time. Yeah. How is it going to be seen in Israel? Do you are you going to show it in? Cinema? I don't know because actually in Israel there are not much of place for short films, unfortunately. unfortunately. On television, not too. On, te on television, you cannot. No. no it's, it's more difficult. We would really want to sell it abroad because we know the. the TV There's more room in Europe, actually in the world in Israel. It's in Israel, you don't have a lot of uh, opportunities for short films. It's like yes, and actually, that, this is why we made this film completely indie, independent, and everybody were volunteering for this film, and it was such an amazing experience. Yeah, I think that this is uh, the amazing thing yes. about this film. Like, everybody were volunteering, and I work as a waiter for a few months, like to, 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 to pay this and to bills. pay the bills. It was a uh, we did it all from our pocket money and uh, savings and um, parents help us and uh, you know my mom was the one that cooked for the set and uh, her mom uh, did, did the, the makeup, makeup. <laughs> uh, we painted yeah. the house of uh, the grandfather alone and uh, mm -hmm. sat there like uh, three days and nights painting uh, all the the art and uh, yeah it was uh, it was hard work <laughs> But I think in general, making films, it's such a beautiful thing because everybody wants the same goal. And here, with all this volunteering, 
it was ama- it was just an amazing experience to see everybody coming and everybody yeah. wanting and everybody wanting to succeed like it's their own all the people that you see in the film did not get money for that uh, all of them volunteered the, the Filipino guys all the, crew, uh, the cinematographer which is amazing all the crew yeah and how how did this maybe this experience influence your future ideas or projects never make in the <laughs> no, <laughs> no i think no, i mean it's, i mean it's but it's it's so important to also have access to money it's beautiful if you can do it by yourself but you know Uh, we should really work on you know there needs to be more money for available especially yeah. for young yeah, uh, emerging filmmakers because we wish but in Israel it's not happening it's yet not happening. just for us to, because it's completely it's independent still, yeah, we, we never studied cinema ah uh, yeah we never studied and yeah, then, but maybe that's easier to get access than uh, yes. through the contacts or something like that. and but actually it's my fir- it's my third film that I'm doing that way wow and Such, it's opening the heart to see all the people just wanting to come and wanting to to work for the art it's amazing and do you plan on making something else now? or maybe you have the chance to meet people here that might give you some money or we, hope so. uh, we need to be very rich uh, no we hope so yeah we, we, we do yes. we want we want to do of course uh, we want to do and not work as a waiter so just to so, <laughs> but you, is your is your plan to make films in the future more films or yeah, how do you want to earn your money <laughs> um, no how do we want to earn our money yeah like what's the dream <laughs> i don't think i don't think we live according to to making money because we want to make art and I, I'm, fortunately it's hard to it's very hard i mean i'm kind of ways. yeah it's kind of you know you have to you have to earn money in your life to make it so it's you can't if you want to continue making films I think at some point you have to get the money you know, because otherwise it's I think we hope to you continue just find making someone very rich and get yes. married and he pays you to do your art and uh, no, I think <laughs> no, just kidding I think it's yeah. very important to go through your art and, and it's much more important to do that than to live richly or because to live, ri- to, to live very rich life oh no not rich no, no not rich life but I think it's I think at some point it's uh, out of respect, you know, that you really, m- that you, that it's being validated, you know, because it's a lot of work and, and film is such a collaborative work, you know, where you have to have involved so many people. I think that the, the, the main thing that we discovered is uh, that you actually don't need money to, to make your art. That's I mean, thing, this, yeah. is, uh, this is important to say that all of the people, like, wanted to help us so much and did everything for us but we do wish um, we could pay them of course but of course uh, we think of the future and I'm studying I'm a student and uh, we continue to do our art and I think that um, I think that it's a matter of I mean things in Israel are 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 getting developed I mean it's it's starting it's like it's it's happening um, yeah. I'm hoping that that uh, Someday, I mean, in the close future, I will have a place and a room for short films and not just uh, for feature films mm-hmm. and, uh, and also budget uh, and things like that for short films and people that are coming in an indie uh, zone, didn't study the or stuff like that. So, um, so we're wishing for that. But I think even if we want to, of course we wish for, for a budget for Someday. our films and yeah. But, But yeah, it's so important it. to continue to make art. Like for me, I'm also a musician. I'm a singer-songwriter, and I'm an actress. And, uh, I think when I don't, when I'm not working on anything, I feel empty. Yes. I have to work on something. I have to have my art in me. Yeah. So. But do you have any future films in mind? Like any concrete content or ideas or I'm working now on a, on a new short and I'm writing Sorry. my first feature and I'm working on my first album as well. And I have yeah. here in the festival two films I was acting at, Inshallah and Six Act, yeah. the Panorama and the Market and yeah. I hope they will succeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what, what are, what are the, plan, the future films, what are they going to be about? Is it again about like uh, death and generations and ostracized communities or like what is the actually my thing? next short is about the uh, transvestite mm-hmm. who is lonely and she's she's looking for a place in the world great <laughs> it sounds seducing okay <laughs> thank you very much for the interview What's my, i'm writing a feature like um, so 
still in progress. It's about a um, psycho lady. Psycho lady? Uh, oh, yeah, in Israel? About, yeah. Okay. It'll be in Tel Aviv. Okay. I'm hoping for co-production or something that some, I mean, to, to uh, but start in Tel Aviv, uh, for sure, yeah. I'm, I'm writing my feature about my grandma. She was a partisan in the, yes, she was a fighter. And it's going to be evolving around her as a protagonist, or? Yes, it will be her, sto her story, exactly the way it was, I hope. To be continued, you know, yes, we have plans, yeah. Good, good. good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.